sorry about the the rain in the background. I'm in my van on my way to my first customer. I'm on a muddy dirt road and it is raining as you can see. So well thank goodness for the rain because the rain is what what uh, brings in the business at the end of the day to allow the crops to grow. So we can't complain about the rain. Uh, but I'm just telling you, so the sound you're hearing in the background, the noise, that's the rain falling on the windscreen. All right, so before I continue, I just wanted to, I would just give you a little bit of an update of where I'm coming from before I started a business. So I used to be a national sales manager over the whole of South Africa for a big company. I mean, I was, I was up there in corporate. I was, for my age, I was, I was quite high up, I right? earned big money lived a good life. Didn't think so at the time, but I know that now. Um, you know, I had two nice vehicles, one for myself, one for my wife, living in a nice house, having medical aid, retirement annuities, general insurance for whatever goes wrong. I basically had it all. And then I decided to start my own business. And um, for the first couple of months it was quite good I mean sorry that it's so shaking um, it's a very bad dirt road I'm driving on my way to my first customer um, so you know I thought it for the first time it's easy for the first couple of months and then you start realizing you know you don't have the money you used to have and you need to start making some changes so I've continuously made changes re-evaluated my financial um, uh, status. Currently, I'm, my wife is driving a very, 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 very old uh, vehicle. I bought, I had to buy a, a, a 2001 model Jeep Cherokee, but it wasn't a fair condition. I think it's, it's something uh, manageable. Um, these are the things that I wasn't used to. You know, I was used to buying new vehicles. Now we're buying very old vehicles. I'm hoping to, to maybe finish paying off this vehicle that I'm driving in. This is my work bucky. Uh, bucky, that's what we call it in South Africa. Um, I think in the US you probably call it a truck. Even though in South Africa a truck is something very big with a very big trailer. Uh, this truck is, well, it's a van, okay? We call it a bucky. In Australia they call it a ute. Long story short, there's a lot of things that you have to give up when you're starting a business. Make no jokes about it. I mean, I don't have a retirement annuity. I don't have any insurance on any of my vehicles, on my house, on nothing. All I'm trying to do is pay my house. All right? Uh, the bank is probably going to take back my wife's um, car, the car that we bought before we uh, started the business. So the bank's probably going to take that car back, so that's why I bought her the Jeep, uh, so that we at least have something. Now remember, this is all my, my startup capital that I'm spending now to, to be able to survive. And you know, our, that is very ironic, that's a, again, we're coming to a cash 22 situation. I'm spending my, my startup capital to survive, but I'm not spending it to make, to build my business. So that's, that's a really, really bad situation um, and we've done the calculations this way and that way but we actually don't know how, uh, I mean, we can build the business, then we're going to lose this van as well as my wife's car and possibly the house. So where, where do you spend your little, the little bit of money that you've got, where do you spend it? Well, frankly, I don't know but I think let's rather try and spend it by getting rid of most of our debt which is this van and her original car. So we're either trying to selling it or, or the bank's gonna take it. Either, whichever one comes first. All right, that's not gonna, it's gonna happen within the next month or two. All right, so, so those, are, those are the things I had to do coming out of corporate, big job, cell phone being paid for me, vehicle being paid for me, to, to this. Now I'm having to do everything myself and I don't even have a certain income. I'm living on debt, that's what I'm doing. I'm building a business and living on debt. 
I'm working in agriculture. What I eat, 80% uh, of what's on my plate comes from my customers, of what they're growing in the fields. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have had anything to eat. Those of you wondering about beer and alcohol and partying and stuff like that, I've had to give all of that up. Can't flip and drink beer anymore, can't drink a brandy, nothing, nothing. You have to give it all up. So when you're starting a business, it's a, it's a really hard fall and um, for the first couple of years. So they're telling me a thousand days or three years that it takes to build a business. So I'm just about halfway now. The business is looking good. My financials is not looking good. So we're in a cash 22 situation. I need more money for diesel to build my business, but I don't have that. So how do we do that? I have no idea. So this will obviously be my first ever YouTube video. And I thought it's probably a good idea to make a video about what it's like building a business. You know, because you read all these, these motivational things and uh, books telling you how to build a business and what to focus on and different principles. But I just feel with the amount of books that I read, none of them really painted the accurate picture of what it's like building a business. You know, so a lot of these books did motivate me to start a business. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's much, the reality is much worse. Much, much worse. You know what, now, I saved up, a, saved up a couple of hundred thousands of brands. Thought it was more than enough to start a business. Well, it's not. All right. So I thought I'll maybe just sh share some of the things that I've experienced over the past 18 months, or just maybe closer to 20 months now. Um, you know what? I started a business in agriculture, but I think some of the principles in my business probably will be the same for any business. Um, and there are many books to read about starting a business and the principles and all that. But you know what? Running out of money when starting a business, coming into a cash 22 situa uh, situation, it's, it's a reality and it is really, really, really difficult to get through. Cash 22. It's never a catch 22, it's a cash 22. Because you need cash to expand your business but you don't have the cash to expand your business so where do you get the cash when you don't have it so like most other people I borrowed money to start a business yeah I had my own savings but I borrowed on top of that all right so that money is running out now it's been about 20 months into the business I'm in agriculture so obviously I'm working according to seasons I've had one startup season, I wouldn't call it a good season, then I went into winter where I had close to zero sales, I mean it's becoming ridiculous, um, you know the ridiculous part of building a business is explaining to your young kids why you are not able to buy them an ice cream, buy them a pudding, take them to the sea, and we live close to the sea. Why are we sitting at home? I mean, we've been under lockdown much longer than, than the COVID regulations have determined. I mean, we are under financial lockdown. We don't eat unless you have to eat. I mean, those are the realities that nobody tells you when you're building a business. The question is, how do we push through this? How do you get through this? You need, in my business, I drive 100 kilometers to get to my first customer on a farm. I'm in agriculture. Where do I get the diesel to see my customers to get the sales? And where, how do I make that choice between putting diesel in my van versus putting food on the table? Where do you draw the line? That cash 22. Where do you draw that line of between paying the rent on your, your warehouse and buying food? Or taking your family or treating your family on a on a on a day out, not even a holiday, just a day out. It's ridiculous. 
Um, and young kids just don't understand what it's all about. They don't understand money and, and, and what it's, what's going on. All they see is that you're being a, a bad father because you're not, you're not taking them out anymore. So, you know what, this is the reality of starting a business. And, and this is what the books don't tell you. Um, and I believe in many cases this is probably what is responsible for marriages being broken up. I mean, if the man in the house cannot provide anymore, I mean, you need a really good spouse to stand by you through these difficult times. Because otherwise I don't see how, how it's gonna, a marriage is going to survive. I mean, this is ridiculous. I've been holding out for 18 months now. I've been making plans and I'm, I'm basically, I feel like I'm running out of plans. I mean, how many more plans can I make to just, to try and survive? Is the business growing? Yes, it's growing. But guess what? All that money that I'm making is going off directly against the, the money that I owe. I mean, the creditors will take their money first before they give you any. They don't give a shit about you putting food on the table or, or building the business further. They take what they need when you get it. And they give you fuck all. They give you nothing. And you know what? The banks are on my case. They want to take the car away. They want to take the house away. They want to... Uh, my cell phone. They want to take my cell phone away. I mean, how do you how do you flip and get through all this? This is ridiculous. So, you know what? I'm just making a video, and probably I'll make a couple of more, just to explain to you from a day-to-day -day, um, point of view what it's like to actually build a business. Forget about what you read in the books and and all these things. Building a business is not a joke. If you're not dedicated to it, you're not going to make it. I am dedicated. I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I am going to make it. But if I wasn't dedicated to building a business, I probably would have been out of this thing a while back already. I probably would have been, I probably would have given up six months ago already. I mean, I see my kids. I see my wife. Everyone is sort of, they don't understand. But in five years from now, they will understand because in five years, the business will be a success and it, and it will be better. And that's the only thing I've got to hold on to at this moment. I see where I'm going and why I'm doing it. And I think in most instances, when you start a business and you don't have a vision of where you're going, you just don't start your business. Because that vision is the only thing that's holding me in the game at this stage. Right, so guys, I think in, when you're starting a business, or whether you're in business already, it's probably a, a key thing to, to, to know when maybe it's time to give up for the day. So on the other side of that river, which is not normally a river, um, it's usually just a small stream, but on the other side of that is my customer and the farm and everything so there's no way I'll be able to see him today and um, yeah this is this is part of building a business it's probably best to just turn around and go do some paperwork today one of my best customers just found me he wanted me to come and come to his farm quickly um, he's probably the, the guy that supports me the best in this this area but he's just offered to give me a bag of potatoes. Now, with the current price of potatoes here in South Africa, it's almost, you know, it's, it's unaffordable to buy potatoes. Um, 
So he just phoned me, said, listen, I must come and fetch him myself a bag of potatoes. And that for me is fantastic. What I told you earlier, about 80% of what's on my plate comes from my customers. And, and I'm in a very privileged position. Even though the business is going slow, even though the financials are not looking good. It's, it's stuff like this that, that makes, makes one positive to continue. And uh, I'm re I really appreciate it. And I'm just, uh, I'll show you, but I'm just on my way to go and fetch it. So I just picked up my potatoes. There they are. And we are being looked after. We are quite blessed. Alright, so I've decided to call it a day. It's raining too much. I can't get into the fields um, to consult. And by the way, I've got a, a truck to load back home, so I need to start heading back anyway. And um, yeah, if you're starting a business, uh, you're a one-man show. And this is where I'm at. I've got to load everything myself. I'll see if I can put something on as as we're loading the trucks. I did try to, to rent some help. You know, I mean, because loading a truck is on my own is just going to take too long. And time is money. In the meantime, I'm, I'm enjoying a carrot that I also got from a customer. Um, these are quite nice to eat while you're driving and thinking. And when you're a little bit depressed, it helps. So good. So I'm back at my warehouse, but I think one of the, the things you need to know about starting a business is you're starting a business without a client base. And what that usually means is that you don't know what you're going to sell. Um, in my case, I'm doing agriculture. So depends on the crop of the farmer, depends on the pest and the diseases that he's got. But if you look around me in the back, you'll see that I am quite clearly very much overstocked and that carries costs every day that it's sitting here on my warehouse I'm losing money a lot of money all right so there's a lot of money tied up in in all of the stock I'm trying to get rid of it as best as I can I've been able to or, or rather allowed to send back some of my stock to the supplier which I'm very grateful for only three tons so I've got lots more than just three tons here. I'm sitting on about two million rands worth of stock and that's way too much. Um, so that, that is the downside of a business. You're putting a lot of capital into stock and you need to sell it. Otherwise your, your capital is captured.